Do you want to make real wood inlays, but all you have is a laser engraver and not one of those fancy CNC routers that are all the rage these days? Well, good news, friends, because in this video, I'm going to show you how to make real wood inlays using your laser engraver, and it'll work on both the diode and CO2 lasers. Plus, later in the video, I'll show you a technique that'll get you darker engravings without the need for borax or any chemicals. Join me. For our engraving today, I'm going to be using walnut for the pocket and maple for the inlay. So the walnut is where we're going to engrave the hole or the pocket that we'll put the maple, which will be the inlay into. While I've got the pocket engraving in my engraver, let's go take a look at Lightburn and I'll show you how I set this up. I've done a lot of testing this week, as you can see from the pile of wolf heads here on the blue tape, to get things dialed in for my laser. I'm going to show you all the powers and speeds that I used and the techniques I used, but this is meant to be a starting point for you. Your laser is going to be different than mine. If you have a diode laser, if it's a higher wattage, if it's a bigger, smaller, whatever, you'll need to experiment. Unless you have one of those fancy CO2 lasers, in which case you've probably already finished your inlay before my video is over. Got my wolf here in late burn. If I preview this now, it is going to engrave all the areas I don't want it to. So in order to flip it so it's going to engrave the white areas you see on this image, and I'm going to add an offset of one millimeter. And now if we preview again, it's going to engrave where I want it to. So I'm going to come over here. We've got 800 millimeters per minute and I'm running at 80% power. I am running two passes bi-directional fill with 2.5% overscanning. And on the advanced tab, I'm going to turn on flood fill. So flood fill, when you run it, it will engrave things by group. So if we look at the time now, it is one hour, nine minutes to do two passes on the wolf. If I come back in here and I turn off flood fill, two hours and 37 minutes. So a significant time saving using flood fill. So I've got the pockets set to engrave. I want to also add a line at the end. It's going to go around all these edges and clean it up. Duplicate everything here. I go to layer one, paste this and line this up to match. And I'm going to drag line underneath of my fill because I want it to happen afterwards. And my line is set to 300 millimeters per minute, 80% power, one pass, and that's it. Everything else is default. Okay, we are ready to go with our wolf and it actually should be done in the laser engraver right about now. First pass is done. I'm checking the depth with the calipers and it's not quite deep enough yet. So I'm gonna run this one more time. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far and you found it helpful and enjoyable, do me a favor and hit the like button. It helps me out a lot, helps it spread to more people and lets me know that you wanna see more content like this. Thanks so much. Our pocket is cut and we're ready to work on the inlay portion, which has a few challenges. For the inlay, I'm using this 1.5 millimeter thick maple, but it is a little twisty. So I'm gonna show you how I get this flat because if it's not flat, when the laser moves over different areas, it'll be out of focus and won't cut as efficiently and your inlay may not come out properly. Another thing is if you're cutting something simple like this gear, there's really only one way it can go into the inlay or into the pocket, but we're cutting something very intricate here and there are lots of little pieces. So if you don't like doing jigsaw puzzles, let me show you how to take care of that. Okay, here's what you need. First off, you need your inlay material. Like I said, I'm using this 1.5 millimeter maple. You're gonna need some masking or painter's tape. I'm using this two inch blue knockoff brand tape. It was recently repriced and it's worked really well for this. I'll link it in the description below. You're gonna need some CA glue. I also have the accelerator for it. Uh, you'll need something to cut the tape with. Lastly, you will need a scrap board that is very flat. In this case, I'm using this piece of MDF that I don't mind messing up in the laser. Plan is we're gonna put the tape onto the inlay wherever the inlay is gonna cut. So I'm just gonna sort of line it up and eyeball, take our tape right about here for my top line. Again, this doesn't have to be super accurate as long as you are sure that the tape you're putting down covers the entire area that is going to be cut out. Going to line these up and I want to make sure they just butt up. I don't want them to overlap, create a bump. So I'm going to get as close as possible and I'm going to cover it like this. And I'm also rubbing it to make sure that all the air is out. There are no lumps or bumps. I'm going to do three layers of this in, a, in this sort of crisscross pattern. All right, so I've got three layers down and now I'm going to add two more. I know I said three, I lied. Flip this over, then we trim off the excess. I'm going to put two layers of tape onto the MDF in the same crisscross pattern. And I'm going a little wider than I need to because this will make it easier to get everything disassembled later. So at this point, you're probably wondering what is with all this tape? The first three layers I put on the inlay is so that we can engrave down to the tape without cutting all the way through it. So that keeps all of our inlay parts in place where they're supposed to be. 
This will make it a lot easier to put into the pocket later, which you'll see in a little bit. The second two tape layers is for the super glue because we are going to take this wavy board and we're going to super glue it down to our flat board and the glue will act as a clamp that will make the board flat so that we don't have all the warping going on. The two layers extra is because I found if I just used three layers, put the super glue on that, sometimes the glue will seep through into and get onto our material, which ends up making a mess when we try to clean it up. Accelerator on the board. And then I'm going to take my super glue and I'm not going to put a ton. I'm going to come in just a little bit from the edge and then I'm just going to run a thin bead. Now we're going to flip it over. I'm going to set it down and then I'm going to give it a little push. I pushed it that way just a little bit so that the glue smears and I get a little bit more glue contact area. Inlay is ready to go into the laser. While the inlay is engraving, let me show you how I set this up in Lightburn. If I preview now, this is exactly what I want the inlay to burn. I wanted to all this black area. I wanted to get rid of all that material and only leave the white areas here. I set it to 600 millimeters per minute, 80% power with two passes and I used flood fill on this one. I want to add a clean line. I'm going to come in here and this is going to become line. I'm going to set that to 300 at 80%. We're going to do one pass. And then the final thing I want to do is I want it to cut through the tape so that I can peel the excess off. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second when I take this out of the laser engraver. And I'm going to do an offset. And I'm going to set the offset to zero. So it's going to cut just the outside. So we want our fill first. And actually, it also helps to label your layers so you know what's going on. This is going to be our cleaning line. And then finally, tape cutting line. Okay. And our tape cutting line is way too fast. I ran mine at 100 millimeters per minute at 80 percent power if we take a look at this now we can see three hours and seven minutes total those of us with just a diode laser these inlays will take quite a bit of time and so that's how we set up the inlay and the inlay should be done on the laser right about now you should be able to make out a little bit of blue under here so we've gone all the way through the wood we've gotten rid of all the excess wood down to the tape so theoretically if this cut properly we should be able to peel this up beautiful i'm just using scraper here just very carefully going to go underneath we're going to give this a quick sand i'm using some tight bond 3 wood glue silicone brushes a bigger roller and you'll see what that's for in a second all right so this is really straightforward take my brush here get some glue on it i'm gonna wipe some of that excess glue off the face all right. Slot this in. Take our roller here. And then we're going to carefully peel off our tape. Because there will probably be some spots that don't want to stick. So I did miss a couple pieces. I have them laying around here. So when I turned on the sander, it, uh, it blew away all those tiny pieces that I was hoping to save, except one. I managed to save one. Not bad. So uh, let's put some finish on this. I think we need a name for our wolf friend here. So leave me a comment down below and let me know some ideas for names. I am super thrilled with how this turned out. I think it looks amazing. And I'm gonna give this to my sister-in-law as a gift. She loves wolves, she collects wolf things. So I think she is gonna love this. As promised earlier in the video, if you wanna know how to get darker laser engravings without using borax or other chemicals, check out my video right here where I explain how to do just that. Thanks for watching everyone.